freaky tiki. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty damn freaky. Um, back with another edition of Strange Science on your Monday, and I don't know that it comes any stranger than this. Um, here, coming from Universi, as of October 9th, 2021, this story, um, real usable DNA data storage is getting closer and closer as scientists work on improvements. Yes, you read that right. <laughs> I'm quite curious myself. I, I said science can do some amazing things. Science can also be very weird. Um, the extraordinary double helix molecule that makes life possible, known as DNA, is the primary carrier of our genetic code. Stored on it are, instruction, are the instructions needed for the development, replication, growth, and working of all known organisms. DNA is over a million times more effective in saving information than our best high-tech efforts at data storage. Interestingly, it is actually possible to encode binary data on synthetic DNA. Damn. <laughs> but sadly, staggeringly slow read and write speeds make it unsuitable for real-world applications. Well, it's not exactly like you can plug it in, I would think. Um, however, scientists are currently working towards a breakthrough, proposing f a faster technique for encoding data on synth on to synthesize strands of DNA. If they succeed, the world may enter a new era of neuron recording and digital data storage. I'm just thinking there's a whole lot of, um, there's a whole lot of possibilities there in terms of moral questions, not just scientific questions. There's a lot of moral questions. Let's keep going. To be fair, there have been some interesting accomplishments in the past already. For example, in 2019, researchers performed an impressive feat by storing the entire English Wikipedia, only the text, which consisted approximately of 16 gigabytes of data on synthetic DNA. Unfortunately, as mentioned in the introduction, DNA as a storage medium is not yet suitable for practical use due to its very, limited, very limiting read-write speeds. But if we were to succeed in making it work, we could store all the digital data on Earth in just a few hundred pounds of DNA, saving a tremendous amount of space and energy. Um, that would be pretty dang freaky. And it would actually probably be pretty dang helpful. Pe people don't realize this. Like, I know at least for the climate modeling world, we are nearing the point of having petabytes upon petabytes of data in terms of the climate modeling side of things. I'm sure it is just as massive in other applications. So th there has been a real consideration of the challenge of how do you store it all? Because you can't just keep building servers all over the place and all that kind of jazz and, and making things, you know, and what you couldn't get you know, you couldn't get um, you couldn't get storage to the size that we have now on portable hard drives or things like that. And even then, that's still not quite enough for some of the applications that are larger and stuff for research and what have you. So uh, the, the the need is there. I'm not getting I'm not getting that wrong. I just this is interesting applications in the human side of things when I'm thinking about, you know, like like the microchips they do in pets. Um but instead of having a little chip embedded, just embedded on the DNA. That's kind of where my brain is going ahead of this. So it's just like, that's cool. Also freaky. <laughs> also extremely freaky. Scientists at Northwestern University in Illinois are determined to solve the remaining issues with DNA storage and propose a novel technique for recording information to DNA that takes mere minutes instead of several hours or days to finish. They publish their findings in the Journal of the American Chemical Society. The researchers utilized an, a unique en enzymatic system to manufacture synthetic DNA that records quickly changing environmental signals straight into DNA sequences, a technology that the paper's senior author, Keith Teo, believes might revolutionize how scientists study and record neurons in the brain. <sighs> in a press release, Teo explained that nature is very skilled in copying DNA, but he and his team desired the ability to write DNA from scratch. Again, moral questions, M moral, moral questions of, is it r really good idea to create lots of synthetic DNA? Uh, freaky. Again, freaky. 
Um, according to Tio, contemporary ex vivo outside the body methods involve a sluggishly slow chemical synthesis. His team's technique makes it much cheaper to write data due to the fact that the enzyme that synthesizes the DNA can be directly manipulated. Tio continued by mentioning that even state of the art inter Intracellular records are slow, slower as they necessitate the mechanical steps of protein expression in response to signals, as opposed to his team's enzymes, which are all expressed in advance and continue, can continuously store data. This part gets slightly more technical. Current techniques for recording intracellular, intracellular molecular and digital information to DNA are heavily dependent on a multi-part process that combines new information with existing DNA sequences. Researchers must activate and inhibit the expression of particular proteins in order to obtain an accurate recording, which can take up to 10 hours. Tio's lab proposes that they could use the new technique they dubbed time-sensitive, untemplated recording using TDT for local environmental signals, or, or TURTLES for short, thank God for acronyms, to synthesize entirely new DNA rather than copying a template of it, creating a faster, higher-resolution high record. As the DNA polymerase can proceeds to add bases, data is recorded into the genetic code on a scale of minutes as alterations to the environment impact the composition of the DNA. It synthesizes. The environmental changes, such as fluctuations to the, in the concentration of metals, are recorded by the polymerase, acting as a sort of molecular ticker tape, registering the time of an environmental mutation. Using biosensors to record these changes to DNA represents a significant step in establishing turtles' viability for use inside cells. In other words, having data recorded inside your cells. Say that again. Data inside your cells. Recorded, changed, edited, like you would on a computer. Freaky! It could give researchers the capacity to use recorded DNA to learn about how neurons communicate with each other. According to Namita Bam, first co-author of the paper... Um, co-first author of the paper, I should say, pardon me. This is a fascinating proof of concept for techniques that may let us study the interactions between millions of cells simultaneously in the future. It is estimated that global information storage needs will reach approximately 175 zeta bytes by the year 2025. I've never heard of a zeta byte before. I'm presuming that's higher than a um, that has to be higher than a petabyte, because what is it? It's, yeah, it's megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte. I think zettabyte is the one right after that. Yeah. Yeah, because it would be 1,000 petabytes or something close to that. Oh, my. <laughs> that is a lot of data. One particular element where the turtle's technique excels is long time archival data storage, the type of storage you, that you write once but never read unless an incident occurs and a backup is needed. Besides storage, an aforementioned, the aforementioned ticker tape function can potentially be used as a biosensor to look for contamination in drinking water. Well, that's a nice side benefit. Thanks to in its increasing scalability and precision, turtles can also provide the foundation for technologies that propel brain research ahead. With current technology, scientists can only examine a small percentage of the brain's neurons, and even then, there are limits to what they can learn. However, scientists were able to track responses to stimuli with single-cell precision across many millions of neurons by putting recorders within all of the brain's cells. Again, I'm... This, this has blown my mind because this is not a field I'm interested in, but it's uh, not, no, well, not, not, not interested, but not familiar with. But at the same time, I'm looking at this like putting recorders within a brain cell, within, within brain cells. That, that, that raises a lot of moral weirdness for me <laughs> as to whether or not that's a good idea. As reported by Alec Callisto, another co-first author of the paper, looking at the rate of improvement of contemporary technology can take several decades before we even record the entire brain of a cockroach simultaneously, not to mention the enormously more complex human brain. However, he and his team... Oh, okay, not like live recorders. I don't think. Anyway. However, he and his team aim to accelerate this progression significantly. While Tio's laboratory is currently... Const is currently... Con That is a grammatical typo if ever there was one right there. I, I believe you want to say is currently concentrating. There we go. Is currently concentrating on developing beyond proof of concept in both cellular and digital DNA recording 
The crew expressed optimism that other engineers will be interested in the concept and will be able to utilize it to capture critical signals for their study. T.O., we are... T.O., quote, we're still building out the genomic infrastructure and cellular techniques we need for robust intracellular recording. This is a step along the way to getting our long-term goal. If you're interested in more details about the research done by T.O. and his colleagues, be sure to check out the following. Um, in addition to the paper listed below. Okay. Freaky tiki. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's pretty damn freaky. Um... I don't know what to think there. That's that's your example of great strange science for the day, but at the same time, I'm just like, nah. I don't know that this is such a... Th there's a lot of moral questions that come to my mind as to whether or not this is a good idea to do this. I can see, like, the medical benefits, perhaps, for anyone with brain disorders thinking of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia. Keep on going down the list. Um, and I'm thinking... But I'm also thinking of other more nefarious things that could be done when you start recording data onto DNA. You know? That's that's where I'm kind of kind of like, what? But anyway, that's your strange science on a Monday. Would you like 175 zettabytes of data on 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 um on DNA? That's it for a strange science on your Monday. I'm Adrian, of course. If you like this video, hit your like button on the way out the door. Subscribe to the channel. Um Comment on the video, share the video, that's the video, all that good jazz. Oh, and don't forget to come on over. There is shiasofia.locals.com now, shiasofia.locals.com. You can come join us and have fun talking about science over there, away from the censorship that exists on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and the rest. So anyway, come on over there if you want to have some fun talking science and philosophy and higher ed stuff. Anyway, um, I'm Adrian, signing off. Until next time, stay curious.